Hey, this is Valerie De La Rosa with Frank 151. I'm here with... Al uh, Baron Claiborne. Constance Patton. And, and Alex Corcoran. I'm also known as VDLR. So we're here and we're just gonna, we're gonna just chat, hang out, talk about uh, some big sale that's happening in a few days. I don't know, no one's talking about it at all. So, uh, you know, no, no biggie. Uh, no biggie. Okay, so, <laughs> uh, we all know that there's a big auction, Sotheby's first hip hop auction. Uh, just let's start with that. Like, what what does that mean to I mean, you? You know, uh, being a first, being part of something that's a first. Well, yeah, no, it's it's, a cool, it's their first auction on hip hop, so it's a big deal because it's the first time they've ever had anything like this. So it was uh, Cassandra Hatton was the one who had called me about it like a couple months ago. So I mean, I you know, I, I at first you know it's like I wonder what's going to happen to it, you know. But it was like you know, but I would rather have it be out there in the public. Hopefully, whoever gets it will show it and display it like you know I've been doing in the past years and stuff like that. And we'll so, see so who who we'll see who actually all that talk. We'll see who bids. We'll see who <laughs> who wants the crown. You know, for real. So what we're talking about here is is the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what we're talking about here is uh, all the food we're about to eat. Uh, what we're talking about here, just so we can kind of like, let's kind of go back a little bit, is we're talking about the famous f photograph that oh, you King, took, yeah, the King, King of New York. Of New York. Right, yeah. um, tell, tell us, just to get some background. Well, I mean, I took the photo in uh, like just th three days before, you know, Biggie was killed. And I uh, had taken his photo previously. It's the one where he's in the white suit in space. So basically, you know, I told him about the idea. He came and we did it. I mean, it didn't really take very long. And then he left uh, my studio to go out, you know, to, where was he, Nevada, California, right? Cal yeah, California when he got killed, you know. So, you know, it's the last studio photo taken of him, I'm pretty sure. And I just, it's, well, at the time, you know, all my photos are more sort of symbolic. So I used to always think he looked like a king, like a big noble, like king. So I used to always tell him that. So the first, in the first one I did, he's in the white suit because I wanted him to be like Kingpin, you know, from Spider-Man. Uh -huh. Because, you know, I would see him and he was, everybody was wearing like a sweatsuit. And so that didn't really interest me at the time because, you know, my photos are kind of more formal at the time. So I was like, oh, get him a, a, like a really nice suit. Like he's a big, and he'll look really impressive. And so he did it and he looked great, you know, he looked great. And so then after that, you know, I would tell him, I'm like, you're a big dude, you should be more impressive. Like wear a suit, everybody wears a sweatsuit. Anybody can do that. And you know, their whole thing was like, well, you know, he's big and tall. We were going to get suits from him. Like, I'm like, there's a thing called the tailor. <laughs> you ever heard of those? Yeah, big and tall. Yeah, yeah. Big yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Or you get a tailor. If I'm making millions of dollars, for you, uh, <laughs> fucking big and tall, like uh, they might even Taylor. come to you, right? right they you might know, come right. to you. Yeah. You no, know, they got. I think Groovy Lou got the, the suit so, for the first shoot, so he got it. And then after that, he started wearing suits because it gave him kind of more of a nobility. Whatever, whatever you say, you're gonna say it. Being how you're dressed is another kind of symbol, you know. And ah, to, ah, yeah, the yeah. symbols, right? Well, to yeah. me, Biggie was like an archetype. Everybody, you know, there's a lot of archetypes. They always just replace themselves. But he was one for me, like that, like the kingpin, or if you go to the Botanica, the dude in the suit with the cane. Like to me, that was yeah. that's what he yeah. was, you know. Um, you know, you, you kind of touched about the crown and like the what it means and and what does it what does it mean? There's so many meanings you can oh, look. You know, yeah. is is he is he, you know, was he being crowned and designated was it ambition was it you know it's off to the side like how did you how how is it off to the side I and mean, obviously is oh, a bit just, like I you know the side because i do that to my hats that's just more of a like a <laughs> personal, personal brand like a southern thing basically like, <laughs> yeah but i've always done that so i did that but also i don't know it's a little whimsical but the thing is is it, like the thing that's funny about the crown is no one ever mentions that the crown is just a plastic novelty crown which is for me what shows like the power of the photo because no one ever mentions the crown at all. And it's literally a $60 novelty crown that I got from Gordon's a long time ago. So yeah. that's why to me, he, that's how strong he is, is that he overcomes all of those, those things that have could have gone wrong with the photo. And then, you know, the fact that he died young also, you know, it gives it that much more power, you know. Can we can we talk about dying young? Cause I, I got out of I got out of the car, 
you know, getting here and I right down the street here on Fulton Street and there's a graffiti and it says die young. Right, yeah. So I just thought that was a little Some people die young. Yeah, it was like a little like going into this uh going into this today. Um what about um like uh Basquiat? And crowns and and and, well, and crown and the crown yeah, that, and mean, the crown, I, I right? That crowd. So yeah. yeah, for me, you that know? it was sort of a graduation of it. He always put it on nothing, and I put it on someone's head. You know, he would, it was just a symbol mostly for him. He never put it on anyone's head. Well, he's got what he's got. We, he's while. got what? Yeah, yeah, he's got one where he, it's himself. Right. Yeah. Right. With Wait, next to Picasso. Thing, yeah, right. Exactly. And it's the Red Kings yeah. from like '81. And I, I I kind of think of that even though, like. Tell me about like lighting, lighting and and well, that and light, and back then it was just a rig I made. It was just a ring light with a, with bulbs instead of like you know the ones you buy. I used to rig them and make them myself. So I did that because it would surround the subject. Because at the time I used was using large format, so it was very. I was using an eight by ten. Even though that photo is actually taken in medium format because of the way I wanted to process it, I couldn't do it in eight by ten. Ah. So I usually shot lot large format. So. It, usually I made the lights and the backgrounds and at that point because they're all like very arranged like I, I you know I do mostly studio stuff because I like I'm doing something specific yeah you know? and it's the red and the red in the background yeah, right royalty, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. All, yeah like you know and then the crown specifically I've obviously seen images of it on the side and whatnot is it more of a matte or is it no, more it's a of shiny a, it's gold a shiny gold yeah, it's okay, a shiny gold. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um where where did you keep it, or where have you kept it this whole well, it's time? I've been at exhibits for the last couple of years. Before that, I mean, it, I had it in storage, you know? Okay, okay, so it wasn't like, like in some no, glass in case in your home, room. or no, like no. you didn't wake up like every no, morning, no, like shy. meditating no, in front no, of it? No, no. I've only seen it like a couple of times myself. Right. When it went on, well, I, I probably saw it with the ICP in LA. That was like the first right, time. Yeah, I, yeah. It was like in storage. I just oh, know about the Annenberg, sacred. Annenberg. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Tell me about that, yeah. the contact high, right? Yeah, the, yeah. so yeah, because that's Vicky did that, so she asked me and I and I because I had a Vicky Toback like, yeah, right Vicky Toback so she organized it she did the book and then and because she asked me and I was like yeah we should just play it with the photo so they did it they did a really great job with it too that show at the Annenberg was beautiful and there was something here right the, yeah, there the was ICB something ICB. right I see right oh well, I see right 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 this should happen a month later yeah ah okay got it got it that was a giant show. It was the yeah, last, no. was like, the oh, last big show of the year, yeah, first and last, year. and it was amazing. It was, it know. was, I mean, lines down the block both ways, and yeah. also like, you know, we got to be there um, for the beginning of it, of course, like we were part of it, but um, to see people's reactions was so cool. Yeah, yeah. You people, know, yeah, like they have moments they with it. A lot, the photo means a lot to people. Yeah. Which is, I think it's a great thing. Why, 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 why do you think? Why do you think? What do you think it means to people? I think it's the symbolism of what it is. It's more. It's a very noble photograph, and everyone understands that. You know, they don't have to go all wax all in. You know, right, but right. They, people can see it's a symbol, and the thing about photos is they're kind of double sim symbolic, because the photo itself is symbolic, and then I can actually put symbology in the photo also. So it has a double layer of symbolic meaning mm. in a weird way that people. You know, and he carries the photo. That's the whole thing is that he carries the photo. And so, uh, what about this idea of like the crown as a legacy, like the as a, the object of itself? Is that do you think that there's well, what is the, the meaning now loaded of onto it? Legacy, sure. Yeah, it's a symbol, and also you, you, and also, but Biggie has his music that he left behind. So he has, he has a, you know, a, a full package of. You know, to be an icon, I mean, he will become an icon. Unfortunately, a lot of them have to die to, for it to happen. But I mean, I'm glad he's remembered in that way instead of some other photo that I would hate or something. Because I like them, <laughs> you know? And I like them, so I, I, I'm glad that he's remembered with that photo. It just make that makes me happy. As a legacy. Yeah, 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 but just the fact that I think he would like the photo too. So how did yeah. you, you guys actually meet? Oh, I, I was doing, um, well, the first time I shot him, I had already seen him because I used to shoot videos for hype. So that's how I, I first started seeing him. And so then they asked me, I can't remember who asked me to take his picture the first time. They just called me up and they're like, man, you know what you do? And I was like, at the time I was like, 
Ah, not if he wears that sweatsuit. I don't, I'm not interested. <laughs> and then they were. Well, why I, is that? Were, why? Why? What, the, I, what does the sweatsuit mean to you? At the time, I was doing a lot of fashion, and and oh. my photos are more formal. I like that. I like. I don't like. I'm like. Even though I think everybody's style is beautiful, I'm more interested in my own aesthetic. I have a certain aesthetic, and it's just more formal. I just like things like that. That's all. And so that was back then, but now in the way the sweatsuit as object, as a fashion object, has kind of evolved, right? Not, not, not for, for you? you. <laughs> no. No, not really. No, no athleisure, no work if I leisure. Wore a to my no. mother's funeral, she'd be upset. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, Button downs, no, linen. I mean, I, I, I mean, I think people like really casual clothes because they feel like they're comfortable. But I don't. I'm not sure you should always be comfortable. Ah. You know, are you supposed to be comfortable all the time? Like always. You know. That's deep. That's, that's deep. Like, you know, you know. Sometimes you, when people are dressed up, they behave a certain way. You know, you don't say, you, how often have you seen two men in tuxedos beating the shit out of each other? I'm rethinking right. my entire outfit oh, right now. <laughs> I should have gone to the dry cleaners before this. <laughs> I think there's a time to be casual, but I also think it makes people feel better when they dress themselves up. People you like, act, act yeah. you, you know, you hold yourself Every a little man, differently. And people, sta people stand up taller and they act differently. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> And it's, it's also like a ritual, you know? They're just rituals that we have. Yeah. That they're getting rid of one after the other. And we're back. <laughs> uh, I had a French fry. French uh, fry. Please, please, okay. Please, um, oh yeah, there's, I, we need to figure out which one of these is vegan. Because there is one of these is vegan. Um, I think it's the most driest one. I think it's this one. Wow. <laughs> um, Okay, so we've kind of gone all over. We were just talking about, you know, leisure and, and clothes and, and how we feel in our clothes and the ritual of getting dressed. Um, you know, you talked about the ICP and the, the Annenberg and the Contact High exhibition. And so kind of with, you know, that was a news cycle, right, of the image, of the, the image. And then now there's another news cycle right now. And so what's that like? What are these... What are the news cycles like, you know, uh, well, for you? I, like, I mean, I, I don't, I mean, I'm just, for me, that's kind of like the purpose of what I was doing. Like, I made a lot of, because I make uh, saints, you know, Santos icons and different ones in my work. So it's, it's, I mean, to me, it's just the thing that I really wanted to do. And, I'm, and I, I never thought I'd have a photo that was looked at by the public as that, but it makes me happy to see it, that people care about it, they like it, and it means stuff to them, because people actually tell me that what the photo means to them. So it, I like it, I'm glad people like it, that's what it's for. That's what so it's it, for. it kind of connects to you, it's, it's another connection, yeah. people reach out, or maybe they haven't, yeah. I'm also, also successful with what I was doing. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And and do you see that there are new people discovering, like new young people discovering it, and discovering what it means, like are, are you getting more Instagram followers, or you know, like, like you just see more. Well also I see the crown, I see people Replicate it all yeah. in art and yeah, all kinds of things. So I see it, you know. So I, I I've seen how it's bootlegs, made it public. It's yeah. no, but even in other people's art, you see the crown symbol yeah. a lot more over the years. And I, yeah, and that's that's a great thing. It's a good thing. Part of the zeitgeist. It really has kind of become part of the zeitgeist, right? Yeah, um, better, to be, better to be the king than the pauper. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, why now? Like why? Why let go oh, of it? I mean, I, now. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I just figured, you know, it's just somebody's. I mean, I don't, what am I going to do with this? Put it in a case and put it in my living room and look at it. I mean, hopefully, somebody will bid on it who wants to show it, you know, to show off and then to to exhibit it. And hopefully, eventually, somebody will either give it to the Smithsonian or or give it to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or something like that because. I, I don't I have a feeling whoever wants it I don't think they're gonna just keep it in their house. Hey, you would buy the crown because you'd want to show it. So share it. yeah, share exactly. It. Share it to connect and with others and show it because you have it. There's only one. There's one. One. That's it. So what is what does what does the meaning of the person who acquires it? Are they 
are they deified in some way because now they they own it or, or is I mean, there I mean, that's I, really that's a bit dramatic i well, know I, I have to get their opinion i don't know if they want to be deified <laughs> that's fine but you know we're just you know known like you know because they you know they sometimes publicize like who gets it or you know right, that becomes sure. you know or well i'm kind of curious to see who will get it like who will bid like who wants it like is it gonna be like you know no no it's it, it gonna be is it gonna be like uh you know like a performer like jay-z or somebody like that i'm just curious to see who cares about biggie's legacy enough to actually buy it you know to get it to acquire it that's what i'm i'm curious to see um so how does it feel to let it go all right, I, you know, I'll get over it. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I have the photo. I don't. I don't need the crown. I mean, I, I made the photo. That's the thing that you know. The crown's a byproduct of the photo. I care about the photo. The crown didn't have meaning until you took it in the photo, right? So you. Oh, yeah. 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 Otherwise, yeah. that's the same crown everybody buys to wear on Halloween. I mean, it's that. <laughs> but know? it's definitely like not easy. We've like discussed it for like I think with my sisters and all of us friends all that for half a year to see like if you wanted to actually let it go or oh yeah keep it, took it. Me a while it to was decide. like not an easy sure. decision oh yeah all. no not at all because people have been trying to buy it for years so uh, okay yeah i was gonna ask like have you have, have you thought about it before or well, you people, people ask you all the time like trying to pay you for it well once in a while people will come to me and ask but never like it's the offers aren't really serious or anything and a lot of what it is is a lot of people just don't think of it like a lot of people didn't realize I had it because they just, I don't know, they assumed I threw it in the garbage, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, or whatever. I don't. So a lot of people just didn't even think about it, you know, because yeah. they think about the photo. Nobody actually really thought about the crown itself from the photo that much. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But it's become like an artifact because of the image. You know? Image gave it meaning. Yeah, of course. And, yeah. And, Biggie gave and, it and, meaning. Yeah, Biggie gave it meaning. And I know that you. Um, when did you and you know it's inscribed right yeah it's just signed yeah the and day so yeah. oh so you did the day of like yeah, yeah, the day of. not knowing no not no yeah of course yeah, nobody no, knew no. right i mean but but you but there was enough where you said you know what this, this is this is not just like a prop i'm gonna throw away like it, it's it's there was some significance yeah. you felt the weight maybe of the photo no, i just i just kept it i don't know why <laughs> who knows why i have no idea why do we keep the things we do right right yeah but I mean, and then, I mean, he died three days later, so that, then of course I kept it. But I probably would have kept it anyway, you know? I mean, that's just how I am, really, in a weird way. And so it's like when people want to wear the actual crown, I just never let anybody do it. I just oh, that's interesting. The they can never, I, yeah, people always want the real one, and I, I, I don't, I won't let, I'm like, no, we can't. You think of all, like, the human oil, you know? You no, think of, not like, not it's even that, it's not even that deep. On one person, it's not like a ah. hygiene, it's not a hygiene thing. <laughs> it's not a COVID. Yeah. Right. No, 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 no. You know, you think Queen Elizabeth would let you put her crown on? <laughs> probably not. Probably not, yeah. probably not, probably not. Right, yeah. um, wow, that's a... Uh, I had another thought, but I'm gonna have to come back to it. Oh, you know what it made me think of? It made me think of, so like, here's a little bit about me. Um, so I, I started a grad school program. I'm getting my master's in economics. So I've been studying about commodity fetishism. That's kind of interesting. Commodity fetishism? Yeah. Oh my, commodity yeah, commodity fetishism. Okay. So commodity the fetishism. So, you know, well, the meaning, you know, the meaning we put into these objects that we, uh, yeah, it's like really, it's, um, <laughs> It's, it's, you know, that kind of is something that, that would fall in that. I'm studying a lot of marks and all of that stuff, so well, yeah, it's, that's all, it, you know, like yeah. even the, you know, like, you know, Supreme and, and, and well, we uh, you're right, yeah. Live in capitalism, yeah. everything can have a, you can put a price on pretty much anything. <laughs> I think that's the whole point. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. It, <laughs> I know, I know. Um, so I, uh, I'd mentioned I'd heard about your podcast, yes. Constance, that you have before this. Did before, you to his before, episode? yeah, of course oh, I did. Of course God. I did. Of course I did. So, yeah. So I, I know I'd been meaning to check it out because I told you that. Yeah, yeah you Thank know. You. Yeah. You. So I, I. Um, you know, so I was already interested in it before, and then when this all came about and, and whatnot, then I I listened to it, and, and you had mentioned uh, Alex's name. 
uh, yeah. in the podcast yeah, related yeah. to this. Can you tell me a little bit about you what you said? <laughs> Oh yeah! Tell us the name of your podcast. Tell us the name of your podcast. Constantly. The name is my uh, my podcast. It's called Fucking Rejects. It's an oral history podcast. It's everywhere. But it's like I, I interview people long form doing their oral history, so they're telling their story. But like, I think I mentioned but I know Alex him really and all well. the guys at Supreme and yeah. everybody that oh, I yeah, met when I Oh yeah, because you guys were all there. The right, first we all day. knew. Right, yeah. yeah. You so, were the first one yeah. he came to. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's. Okay, tell me that. Okay, okay. So tell. So tell me that. Tell me that. Tell me that. Okay, so sorry, I'm like recover memory now. Thank you. Welcome, welcome uh, back. I'm back. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you mentioned that because um, we were talking about the crown, and you took the photograph, and then like you were in Paris working, and then when you came back, they had to paste it up. Right, somebody right, sent me the a, a, right. A somebody photo. pasted yeah. it. It was like a beautiful job. Yeah. But then you said you got back to this neighborhood, and and then you saw the photo and took it to Alex first, like. Yeah, in Lafayette. Yeah. And so when you say took it to him, where were you? Uh, Supreme. At Supreme. At Supreme, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I used to know yeah. all those dudes. Yeah. Gianni. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, he's the first one. <laughs> You're the first one he showed. The photograph. Right. Yeah. And so what'd you think? Because right. I saw you on the street. Yeah. yeah. You're the first one that saw the photograph. Wow, that's, that's, so, that's, that's crazy. That's fucking crazy. Wait, did you even think about that going no, into this today? No, no, never thought yeah, about it. I, went I did my research. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> investigative report. That was so good. First time. Y'all, I'm legit. I'm legit here, all right? I'm legit. Evidence. No, yeah, that was cool. Wow, I mean, it's, cool. Like, it's really great right. for me. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that I get no, to, like... No, I'm blushing. I know. <laughs> Wait, so then what was that? Like, do you remember Like, do you remember? I just that, remember being, sty- being so psyched, and I'm being like, yo, Baron, that's right, you fucking rocked it and then so you knew it was something special oh right it was a biggie so on top of that yeah and the way the when you looked so at the photo it was just so like beautiful. so beautiful and like i love photography besides skateboarding photography is my second love and i was just like what the fuck this is so awesome like you know just like for me i'm like yo do it that's it like i'm always everyone's fan like when they're doing something yeah, so yeah, rad yeah, yeah. Man. Constance, thank you for that podcast because okay, I got that little. Listening. I got that little. New episodes coming up. <laughs> <laughs> and you got great music that plays in the beginning. Oh, I'm gonna yeah. check out the rest. Yeah, like I was just like, wow. I was like, favorite project. I, I like. I was doing like weird interviews back in the day, and like uh, it's it's nice because I like, you know. Baron, with his work, he's like built an archive of all these creators, like for the last, I don't know how old are you, 70, 76. fucking 50 years, right? So he has like the first photographs for so many people, or like, like Lupita and you know, things like this. So I wanted to kind of create something that was an archive or like a yearbook of like New York right now. And I've done it in LA and Detroit as well. And you know, like collecting story, just like collecting story, letting people tell their own story. So oh, yeah, yeah. You do it, I have yeah. more coming out. You guys had a great rapport on. I I, 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 I was like laughing out loud at some point because I was like, you guys were texting me like, girl, I want to smack him. Because I was like asking you questions, you were like, but you know that already. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you asking this? Like, like, they don't know. Yeah, you're great. Uh, so, so you know, you said that he took a lot of firsts, you know, a lot of first yeah. photos before people were bigger on their way. And, and you know, is that really emblematic of the time, that play, part of New York, like New York at that time? Like, what was that like? Well, no, like when you take photos, but at, at the time I was doing a lot of celebrity photos, so sometimes you just get them first. Like, it depends on, like, who you've been shooting and who you know the photo editors are. Sometimes they or sometimes people will think that you want to shoot a person that they like. So they'll be like, oh, this person will send me that you like it, and then they'll get you to shoot the person because they think you might like them more. You know? Oh. They'll give you anything but money. You know, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Exposure. Like, you get exposure. It's, like, always, always. it's a book. <laughs> but yeah, no. And sometimes you like certain people. Like some people I wanted to photograph. Like Biggie was one. I wanted to photograph him. I just wanted to do it the way I wanted to do it. How did you direct him? Yeah, you just tell him what to do. You just do it. It wasn't like he didn't talk a lot or anything. I would just tell him what to do. And then like I do everybody. And he would do it. If you don't want to do it, you won't do it. And then, yeah. It's pretty simple because he's a really easy to get. He was like an easy subject. Like if you see the amount of what's an easy what's an easy subject? Like an easy person to take a good picture of, you know. 
yeah. you know, or they have a natural thing where it just comes out, they're just perfect for what you want. Because sometimes I already think of what I want the person to be, so sometimes they are, they're perfect in what I want, you know. That's what I usually try to pick, like when I do photos, I try to pick a person that fits in, you know, is what I'm thinking of. Ah. You know, so you, they don't have to do much. You know, it's not like you're gonna be like, Biggie, jump. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Biggie, hold these two pinwheels. <laughs> Come on, you got a Vogue, baby. Right, yeah. Right, right, right. Like, his own character makes you, kind of directs you to what you should do, you know? And sometimes people will do the opposite. But I would feel like somebody like him wouldn't do that, you know? So people don't want to do certain things. I have to respect it. What other props did you have on set, or was it? No, I did, that's it. I, it was, that's it, that's it. Because he didn't have a lot of time, because he was leaving. So I had, it was, everything was ready when he came. I probably shot him for like less than an hour, probably. You know, there's not a lot of of of, of frames from it. There's not a lot of them. You know, because also I do lots for myself. I wasn't shooting tons and tons of film. I never did. Right, you had no, you didn't have like an endless hard drive. Also, right? I no no you could you could shoot a lot of film. I mean, oh, yeah. but it was just that I use eight by ten and four by five, so you don't. It's it's sheets, so I never shot a lot. I kind of know what I want before I start. I'm just trying to get it. What do pe what do young people ask you? You know, I'm sure people seek you out for advice all the time. You know, what 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 do, what do you what do what are they asking about and, and what what advice would you give them? Well, the people that want to you know make it you know are trying to are out hustling and trying to make make it. <laughs> it's my Achilles heel. Oh, I mean, I just tell people you have to do the work. Like you have to like actually do work. If you look, you got to take pictures, you got to meet people. I mean, even though in this age where everything's online, it's still better sometimes to make personal connections with people. And then I tell people, you know, if you're a photographer, I was hanging out with a bunch of other photographers most of the time. So you like push each other and stuff. I mean, later on you kind of separate because you become really competitive, a lot of people. But you have to hang out with the people who do what you, you want to do. Like whether you, I mean, that's the only way you can ever do anything. You got to hang out with the people who are actually doing it. And that's how you get better, you know? They say steel, sharp, and steel, you know? Yeah. Hey, what's up, man, how are you? I'm good, good, good. <laughs> but yeah, like, that, but that's the thing, you got, you, you, you have to do it. Whatever you want to do, you actually have to do it. You can't do it really, to be it. Yeah. Do it to be it, right? Yeah, yeah, just like you become you what are. you, you are. also become what you think. Oh, that's, yeah, So you have yeah. to be worried, you have to be worried about what you think about yourself because you become what you think. That's just how shit is. Yeah, sometimes it takes some time to, to realize so that. Takes, well, yeah, yeah. That's why you get older, so you can figure out some stuff, you know? That's, I mean, you have to be positive, you have, and you have to keep going. You kind of have to have some sort of tunnel vision. And depending on how badly you want to do it, you can't have any distractions, you know? And sometimes if you have people around you, they distract you from your thing, you know? Not the people who are, you have it in common with. But, you know, you get people, you have a lot of distractions. But even if you have distractions, if you keep doing the thing that you want to do, in the end, the work will help. Even if you're not the best at something, if you, like, hard work will outdo talent. If you have both, then you're twice as good. But out, hard work will outdo talent every time if you actually, because I know some photographers whose images aren't, like, as good as others, but they themselves are really compelling. And they can talk. And people like them. So part of it is an extension of yourself. Your art is... You're, is an, whatever you do, it's really just an extension of yourself, really. You know, you're selling yourself. You know, like right. I'm right. in my photos. You know, so people are buying me partly. You know, they might see other shit in it that I don't see, but they're getting it off of the thing that I put in front of them. You know? Hard work out does talent. That's of course yeah, I work out yeah. He works like you are the most inspiring artist that I've ever met. Before like we became friends of any of the, any of the fucking shit. Like you know She just wants me to leave her the estate. <laughs> you fucking better. What are you talking about? Like you got him. What do you mean? I'm gonna take care of you, baby. Wipe your diapers. You don't wipe diapers, you just take them off. You know what I'm doing? Take them off. No, but like cloth sustainable. Like I literally, <laughs> I know you will. I'll be like right there with the nurse. Like, girl, don't worry, I got it. <laughs> You're my best friend. So romantic. No, no, we're like that's romantic. Yeah. But I've watched him work. Like I've watched him 
work for almost 10 years of just like straight, just straight hustling where, you know, I'm like, oh, let's go to Hamptons for three days. And he's like, I got to work and now I'm busy. So I'm like, oh, I can't go. And I, now I understand what it is. But you've been doing that the whole time. And there's times where, you know, I just know you're awake at 6 a.m. working on something, you know, to meet some deadline and you don't even care. You're, or I'll <laughs> come meet you the next day and you're like, oh, I stayed up all night. I had to send this thing. So like that, it, but your work is of course like It's the also because I had real jobs that suck. So <laughs> I know what it's like. But it's work on your just, craft and not like, like, a, like a like a day, day job and a side hustle. There, yeah. Like yeah. I bartended for so many years right, and like yeah. and like, you were you showed me that like you know what you gotta just you wanna be an right, artist. You, you told me you were like right. if you wanna be an artist you gotta be an artist and you can't be safe and it suck it sucked for like two years I was so broke before I started like getting work and now I'm like. It's great, you know, right. but like your work ethic is. And also, you have to take a chance. Good if you are not willing to take a chance on yourself, who else is who going to? Take a chance yeah. on you. You have yeah. to get. You have to do it yourself. Someone. That's yeah. why you were born. You were born by yourself because you have shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't come with a bunch of people. <laughs> you know, you're a twin. Just, or yeah, well, yeah. Not everybody doesn't come with like a group. You know, yeah, so you, so you talked about taking risk and about making your art and, and the hard work and, and, and talent. And so what's what to you is taste? You know, yeah, taste. Everybody's taste is different. I mean, everyone's taste is different. I, I even know people's work that I don't like the work personally, like aesthetically, but I can see what they put into it. So mm -hmm. then it's still really amazing because it's their thing and they do it really well. It, it might not be my aesthetic, I might not love, but I love the craftsmanship of it or what, or the detail or the technique or whatever. You still have to admire that whether you love it like aesthetically or not or like emotionally. You have to recognize other people's good work too, you know, in all forms. Like there's art all around us, like people, you know, logos like Supreme, like, you know, and most of the art most of us saw growing up was on postcards right. and, you know, classical music and cartoons and all that. So you get it, it's all around you, it's just whether you absorb it and how you do it. The reason I used to like all the guys at Supreme and Ross and all them is because they took like, you know, the shit that you see all the time and made it special instead of like, this shit that no one ever see, you know, like it, they, you, they're taking items you see every day and they turn them into art. Because they recognize, just because, I think sometimes people think it's when everybody likes something, that somehow means it's not good. But no, sometimes something is so good, everyone recognizes that it's good. They might not be art historians or anything like that, but they just recognize that it's good. It, they're like, oh, that's that's nice. I'm, I might not like, but that's a dope aesthetic or whatever. Yeah. Sometimes it takes time. You know, sometimes things come down to, to people. It takes some time to digest it and then they get it, you know? And, so, and if, if you stick to your own thing eventually, your shit, your style or whatever you're doing will break through, but it just takes time. You know, I want to ask you, Baron, what is something that you wish someone would ask you about this that they haven't asked you? Either about the photograph or about the crown? What, what is something you wish people would ask you about it? Oh, I, feel like, I feel like you get asked the same thing a lot, you know, you get... Yeah, you, people ask them every You know, question, you know. I don't know, I mean, most people, they've covered it pretty well, I have to say, over the years. It's been like 20 years, so people have asked about everything. Well, I mean, I like I said, the, only, the thing that I think that's great that no one has ever asked is about the plastic crown. Nobody brings it up, you know? That's the one thing I think is great about it. It doesn't, it didn't matter. Like he carried the photo that well that no one even noticed the fact that's just a simple novelty crown. And that's the gravity of, of Biggie himself, you know? I took the photo, it's still him, you know? It's his, it's his weight that carries the photo too. You know? And he was one of the best rappers. I mean, you know, in the end, you know? To me, I, I mean, I know some people have their own top five, but he's up there in mine, you know? What makes a great rapper? Your linguistic dexterity, baby. <laughs> Linguistics. Dexterity. Lingdex. The lingdex. The lingdex. So, uh, so the last question we like to ask is, what does it mean to be frank? Well, I like being frank. It's what it's, it sounds like what it is. Straightforward. You know, no fillers. Just give people the information and be frank. 
You know what I'm saying? Frank, say straightforward. Straightforward, <laughs> Frank. You get it? Right forward. Tell the truth. Don't lie. People can actually deal with the truth. There you go. You know, yeah, keep it 100. Well, she said 100. Thank you so much, Baron, Constance, yes. Alex. Thanks for the steak in the 40s. <laughs> <laughs> you know how we do. Till next time. They don't cut corners at Frank. <laughs> <laughs>